everyone, and welcome back to the JoyClix Gamescast. This is episode 77 here, recording August 11th, 2021. I'm your host, Christian Buckley, joined once again after a brief week off by the cozy conductor, Kevin Diaz. How are you? Doing good. Doing good. Doing good. I, I almost want to... Ch- Yo, I am I am the specter. I am yes. the captain. I am I am I am the commander. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I'm out here. I'm out here. Mm-hmm. We're out here. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yes, sir. Good stuff. <laughs> good stuff. But uh, how you been? Been good. Last week. Um, last week was busy. I don't even know why I was busy last week. I can't remember, but I was busy last week. You know, it's just summer's winding down, mm-hmm. setting up fall plans. Um, this week as well, pretty busy, but um yeah the uh the games did not stop because mm. we got mm. plenty of stuff to talk about when it comes to games we've been playing uh news wise it's a very light episode news wise because there was some stuff last week a lot of it was activision blizzard updates uh, this week i feel like there hasn't been as much news period just like announcements of events which we'll talk about when they happen but um yeah today is a lot of catching up what we've been playing and some impressions on an early access game and a beta that we both played separately. Indeed. Two games Indeed. specifically, which we'll get to. But um, before we kick off, patch notes real quick. Abandoned. Um, <laughs> abandoned was abandoned, quite honestly. Indeed. Like, indeed. Indeed. You set a stream up on PlayStation Source the other day to I did. go live when the thing was updated and the live experience trailer in app was going to show the trailer teaser thing for abandoned right and that was supposed to go live at three my time i think noon for you is that what it was yes yeah yeah um they were very clear that hey guys time zones are not affected it's going to be a worldwide it's going to start at this time yes so y'all converted to your time zone this is when it's going to start this was this one is going to go live. We had Hassan even quote tweet it and say, don't be late. So I was like, okay, it seems like they're, they're going to have it up at this time and there should be no problems. And we're nearly over. We're nearing 24 hours mm-hmm. and the update's still not live. Yeah. Um, so that's fun. That's fun. But uh, I will definitely still stream it. Like I just changed the thumbnail and the title on the stream yesterday to properly reflect what actually happened, which was no abandoned trailer, but fun times with Splitgate and Avengers, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Um, but I will stream the abandoned reaction when it actually goes live, this 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 teaser, if mm-hmm. you will. Uh, I've um, seen the running theory now is Thursday because that is the, what, seven year anniversary of PT launching, which is very similar in terms of just being this weird demo trailer sort of thing and obviously there's all the connections people have been uh trying to make to this project and konami kojima silent hill um so i i think that's maybe a fair expectation for tomorrow based off of yeah all this very weird very out there randomness of yeah from my perspective what seems like a team that keeps seeing opportunities to make things feel like there's breadcrumbs and then taking them. I think that is like, especially now with this, like, yeah, I've had tomorrow, I bet is when it happens. So, yeah, I think I'm going to, I think I'm treating this the similar vein of Donda or like CLB, mm-hmm. right? Where like, when's Kanye going to drop Donda? You know, who knows? When's Drake dropping CLB? Who knows? Allegedly, both albums are done. Apparently, abandoned teaser trailer is is somewhat to a conclusion of being made. I don't know. Um, so I'm going to keep on alert, but I'm not even going to say like, oh, I think for sure it's happening Thursday or I, I, I'm leaning towards Thursday. I don't know anymore. I'm just I'm just here for the ride. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm mm-hmm. just here for the ride. Oh, man. But I just I, I just want to see it. I want to see it. You know, we did get that 10 second clip, right? That. I guess the character model looks a lot like the character from Silent Hill, I guess. Yeah. That, but. It know, is what it is, man. It a is man wearing is, a jacket and we'll jeans, see. iconic we'll Silent Hill, you know. Which, you are very right. That's yeah. not the most, no, uh, yeah. you know, yeah. It's not the most prominent. Pro- prominent? It's not, not the most yeah. prominent. Mm-hmm. 
I'm character stylization, but you know, it is what it is. <laughs> it I'm, is, just, what it is. I'm just excited to see whatever it is, so people stop talking about it. Mm. That's mm. the main thing. I'm still like in it for the fun, low key. Like, I, I don't see what this is. You no, know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, I'm curious for sure. I, I just, yeah. I just think yeah. there are some. This happens with Nintendo all the time, but there are some content creators not gonna put a spotlight on anything specifically but like act like oh, there's shit. every single thing is evidence and then when nothing happens out of it they're like guys what happened what happened when it was like <laughs> that person who was the one who's been like confirmed evidence like this is happening with the spider-man trailer too like all the time always anyway yeah yeah, yeah. uh i still stand by eight mm-hmm. i'm i think something's up but oh no yeah. that's, that's, it, that's it's a very much weird where my case for sure yeah yeah yeah, so. yeah, yeah. That's where that's where my speculation stops, you know. Mm-hmm. So we did get to um, play some Avengers yesterday, though, because there was not an abandoned event, and we were joined by Mario Rivera and Cameron Hawkins, which was very fun. We got to squat up, do some Avengers stuff. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Did you see the name I put on our uh, Discord chat? You know what I'm saying? Little, I did. Little, you know what I'm saying? Avengers squad? Question mark. Yeah, what are we? Yeah. Some sort of avenger <laughs> i tried to do a suicide squad <laughs> um so in our in our uh time since last recording you have been able to experience the avengers hawkeye dlcs the kate bishop story the clint barton one which are both like telling the same story because when they initially revealed it they were like hey they're, these are two acts of one story there's the kate part yeah. that sets up the hawkeye one and then there's the hawkeye one that ends abruptly and then is finished in a mission that we played yesterday but overall impressions what did you think of the characters and story for this addition to avengers yeah i mean like the so like i'm i'm someone that came from the main campaign Mm -hmm. right and then uh not so much the post stuff like the the uh the more like multiplayer suite of avengers was not really something that i was jiving with um so just coming from the main campaign which i was pretty high on i i liked it a lot you know i think they did a lot of really cool stuff in that story um and i just thought it was a really good experience uh but going into kate bishop like i think they teed up some of the kate stuff you know involving future stuff and all that but i think i maybe just forgot maybe but Mm -hmm. um it like seemed a little bit random, but they kind of played off as like, "Hey, like you know, Kate's back in the fold. There's a another mission. Let's yeah. just le- let's just do the thing." Yeah, so think, it, it, it wasn't that bad. I yeah, think like the tying thing is that she's actively looking for Fury, and she like hears that That's what Shield is. is back up because in okay. the main campaign, when they introduce like I think the Vault missions, there's a message from Fury that plays in like the Shield bunker. That's like, "Hey, go right. low." good luck i trust you guys i gotta take care of some shit and then that was it so like yeah it, it was a very minor thing in one mission so yeah i i hear you yeah yeah but like the like main pull is like finding fury essentially yeah uh which you know the um like the the like story-wise it was cool and everything you know i was i was entertained with kate um i liked her character actually a lot you know mm-hmm. again like this is another um impression of me finding a new like marvel character and like getting getting to know this person more from a game standpoint before they they get their own show with with miss marvel coming out soon in the mcu with um i almost said kamala harris fuck (laughs) kamala khan (laughs) kamala khan Mm -hmm. (laughs) kamala khan and uh uh kate bishop with hawkeye this year right um so I think we have another two for two. I think they did a lot of really cool character, uh, like a, like a lot of cool character moments with Kate. Even when it's like super subtle, like even when it's super subtle, like one liners that I think just really just play well into, you know, just describing this person and how she reacts to things and everything. I feel right. like she's, um, you know, like just has a bit like more of like a spunky, like like a more kind Tony Stark, like in terms sure. of just you know just not being like an asshole about what she can do but mm-hmm. like just you know just 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 being like fun with it so i think like she was a fun character to um learn and play with and everything her um gameplay i liked i didn't love um but i liked like it was a cool you know uh um suite of 
abilities, but I definitely grew to like Hawkeye a lot more yeah. for sure. And his abilities, like I think he was a really, really nice character, but it is cool that they made very similar characters and like both literally being Hawkeye, mm-hmm. right? Um, able to feel at least distinct and different. You know, yeah. I think they they did a really good job at that overall, mm-hmm. you know, because you, you would imagine they would have. And I thought to an extent, like they'd have a more similar uh, like how I put it, like a more like I thought they'd be closer in how they felt gameplay wise. Yeah. Like than what they actually ended up being, mm-hmm. you know, so that was cool. That, yeah. that was a big thing for me, too, because like when Kate dropped, I was like, oh, I like how Kate plays. Um, I didn't love her L1. I don't think like where she puts down the hologram because I just never used it. I never understood how to use it. Um, I use it sometimes. It just mm-hmm. wasn't. I just found it to be not that useful. Yeah. So, so I, I love hear on that. Yeah. And like I love bow characters in games. So when Kate came out, I was like, yeah, I'm pretty much just playing her every time I queue the game up. And then when Hawkeye Clint Barton came out, I was like, oh, he I like his yeah. kit uh, like significantly better. But I still really like how Kate plays as a foundation. Just the way I play avengers i think clint's kid is more up my alley so it's interesting yeah. to hear that it was like that for you too yeah yeah i i definitely was like oh shit like it was after like the first like harm room where like you learn mm-hmm. his abilities and stuff i was like oh look, like he's gonna be really fun in mm-hmm. combat yeah and he ended up being really fun in combat which to just be super clear like kate isn't bad she just oh, no 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 yeah i just find hawkeye better <laughs> like, yeah like, like more I, more more fun yeah when she yeah. came out and i was talking with jack about it on excelsior the avengers podcast on this channel every saturday um i I, w- I was coming from a very similar position of like yeah i really enjoyed kate but i like hawkeye clint barton more by like not a large margin because i do think like they both play really well and then it's just kate's focus isn't the focus that i enjoy right. like i played kate surprisingly i use melee with her a lot and clint i'll do melee like if i need to but i do find myself playing ranged way more with clint than i did with kate just because i think yeah. some of his abilities uh lend to that ranged bow character play style a little more yeah 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 and then like to to talk a little bit more about like both kate and hawkeye and like kind of like comparing them because mm-hmm. i played them back to back um i found kate's like gameplay segments to be like and and some of Hawkeye's too, like damn, like it's 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 hard because like I, mm, I'm gonna say this, but I feel like it can easily be easily be rebuked, like in Destiny when a new you know story dump comes out or like a new you know um, piece of content comes out for it, right? Mm-hmm. Like it's not like it's like a hundred percent different in terms of gameplay, right? Like yeah. you're still doing like defend the computer stuff and everything. And like, that just makes destiny destiny, right? Mm. Like what, what, what you're doing in the game, like it's just a task that they reformat to make it. So when you do it again, it doesn't feel repetitive, right? Like, like that's the nature of like a game. Right. Um, I felt like the Kate Bishop stuff definitely was more of like, oof, I've done a lot of this before. Yeah. Like I remember this from like the first time I played Avengers story, which was like last year, mm-hmm. right? Like I, I was like, oof, like like this feels a little bit repetitive and like not the greatest way, right? Yeah. Um I felt that Hawkeye his uh uh his stuff, yeah, like there were similar gameplay stuff, but like I feel like it was definitely recontextualized in a different way with like having like a much bigger different biome than mm-hmm. Kate's overall, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so yeah, like I felt like Kate stuff was definitely like, uh, this, this isn't like the most exciting thing to play, you know, but like there was cool moments in there, but just not like anything that it is ringing home for me as opposed to Hawkeye, you know, yeah. where like there was some cool stuff where you're playing as old man Hawkeye and stuff like that. And, mm-hmm. and um, you're in this wasteland and, and stuff. So I found Hawkeye stuff to be a little bit more, uh, intriguing at least, but I did find the what's what's Hulk's name? Maestro. I I want to say Mobius every time. Okay, Maestro. Yeah, Maestro. I uh, like I knew he was in there from promotional yeah. stuff, right? But I was shocked at how little he was in there. Yeah, I think it's you know it's mainly just like oh, the visual of Maestro is more exciting than monica because like monica the scientist lady was yeah 
the main villain of the campaign essentially like modok was yeah. there but it was her plan and then right. in the post-game quest which like there is one there is some a few more cutscenes post-game um she's the main threat and then when you get through the kate thing it's like oh monica is planning something to prevent a thing and then when you do the hawkeye one it's like oh she did it but she didn't like fully go through with it so it's been her this whole time year one has been the monica arc but it's not exciting in a trailer to have like frozen in time monica holding a cosmic cube where right. you could have this cool <laughs> hulk fight that is mainly there to just give a new villain sector into the game which i think it needed you know the game had taskmaster and abomination forever it still does but um yeah i i i hear that for sure maestro was inconsequential to the story it was just kind of set dressing kind of the way old man hawk i was i think like he had more to do i think especially when you see the resolution of that whole arc with the mission we played but um yeah maestro yeah. was very much yeah. just like he's there also i'm gonna throw that there too i think they used the same voice actor for both hawkeyes old man and current yeah. they mm -hmm. just told old man hawk i hate to sound old yeah. you know mm -hmm. i oof I, I wasn't feeling that <laughs> like i don't know like i did not like old man hawkeye's like voice direction you know mm -hmm. as a whole but hawkeye sounded good mm -hmm. but that's that's a super minor one that's just like you know what do you want kev like fuck right. it like he tried you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. <laughs> like oh well but um but yeah you know that one i didn't love that performance but um overall i mean hey yo yo i i gotta keep it honest you know i know it's the cool thing to poke at avengers out of that whatever dead game whatever you want to say out of that you know but um like hey i, I I had fun with these DLCs. I enjoyed myself. It was cool to come back to these characters and cool to come back to this world at least, you mm -hmm. know. Um it wasn't like exceptional, right? Yeah. But like I I still That's had a fun, fun time with it. Yeah, and and it was a good at least tee up to me actually going into the Black Panther stuff um with the uh, with a character that like I definitely, you know, like a little bit more mm -hmm. as opposed to Hawkeye and K Bishop, someone that I've never played as or no no contact with no context with with kate and know a little bit about hawkeye but not that much about hawkeye without getting to someone that i know a little bit more with mm. black panther i think it's gonna be super cool um yeah and also i, I was kind of shocked that like as far as i mean as far as i'm aware i think th this is like 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 the last thing i'll say did they tee anything up for i know they i know kate bishop like mentions wakanda at at one point mm -hmm. in the dlc but like is that the only lead in to black panther like is there any i so central the, lead in or? there's the yeah. like a pitch for the expansion that does tie it to the event at the beginning of the campaign but that's there's no in game i don't think unless it's in a document that i never read um there's no okay. gotcha. direct reference to like oh i wonder what t'challa's doing there's nothing like that yeah but, yeah so but yeah i'll yeah. i'm i'm definitely gonna check out the black panther stuff for sure mm -hmm. for sure definitely um, I think I'm gonna treat Avengers like I like kind of like how I treat Destiny, you know, where I'll pop in on the main story stuff, you know, but I'm not in there in the weeds doing yeah. all the doing all the villain sectors and mm -hmm. and such, you know. Yeah. But I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Good to hear. Um, I I got two quick ones. Yeah, I'll start with this. Uh, we talked about Destiny. I've been playing a lot of Destiny. Uh, destiny 2 been doing um <clears throat> excuse me last week iron banner was back so i was doing a lot of that in the crucible crucible less yeah, annoying how now. was it less annoying really did they did they did they stop the plague S <laughs> stasis is still usable but in okay. most of the matches i played i was not getting stasis left and right like i did before like full body freezing happened to me probably like five times across 10 to 12 hours of crucible last week i can 100 percent put up with that yeah that's fine that's so, fine okay good to hear good to hear that actually might bring me back to be honest because you know mm -hmm. stasis was really out here ruining everyone's life yeah uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> for so, sure in the in the pass i i had the free like season pass right like just progressing in the free one and i hit level like 70 i think and the season ends on the 24th and i was like at this point i got like four exotics 
with me if I buy the the pass it's 10 bucks so I bought it um so now I can like fully progress the season's quest line and the new activity which got its epilogue today new cutscene in the game the elixir are in the city and there's like some attack on them and like Saint 14 is a big role to play so a lot of exciting things teeing up the event on the 24th which is the launch of season 15 and their future of destiny 2 witch queen reveal thing so um about 14 no 13 days left in the season so gotta, gotta haul ass and get through that quest line which uh, is fun it's a cool event like um it's kind of like gambit a little bit where you can match make into a six-man activity on a variety of planets there's a vex like conflux structure and tons of vex just spawn and you have to kill them you get data chips from them and then as you're killing them you can like throw those chips into the conflux to progress further and further until a certain number of waves pass you get teleported into the vex network which is all like the digital tron looking thing and then you fight a boss it probably takes like 10 minutes for a single run of the mission so i probably have like i'd guess maybe 10 of those ahead of me before i finish the story arc for this season which is interesting because like since beyond light launched destiny's been getting way heavier on um having consistent story content throughout the seasons like um the season of the hunt was setting up some hive stuff and then uh fleshing out crow season of the chosen was earlier this year um the empress of the cabal who is like next in line after her uh raid boss father was killed um comes to the get the um solar system and is like trying to get zavala to have a peace treaty so they can fight the hive together and then zavala has an assassination attempt on him like there's a lot of stuff they're doing in the seasons and this current one is sort of just telling a a story about classism and racism through the the last city and the guardians and the elixir which i think is very interesting but yeah looking forward to what's next at this uh august 24th event so that yeah that's that that's really exciting that mm -hmm. that that's really cool um the shit the next big story thing fuck it's not called Be no beyond light was last year yes what's the new one again the witch Queen. i know which queen have they they've they've pushed out to 2022 or yes no? so that is 2022 early 2022 though i i okay. think a That's lot cool. of the speculation right now is that february would be the earliest and hey that's pretty cool that's Bun neat. bungie has been pretty vocal about like wanting to get their expansions out of the fall release calendar because it's too crowded yeah i think oh that's actually a really good call actually yeah, yeah that so. yeah yeah not that like i i don't feel like destiny gets overlooked whenever there's something that drops for it i still feel like it gets a lot of buzz and attention but like to have it drop by itself i think can make a a way bigger splash yeah because you know? um yeah for sure for sure like for sure they get no matter what like the people who are invested as you are for the story expansions they get them no matter when they drop right oh, yeah but yeah for a wider audience since there is a free-to-play entry to destiny now and on game pass you That's get every cool. expansion so like it's kind of free for everything there um it's attracting new players at a time when there's less release stuff so i think it is really just a net positive for them to rip that band-aid off and just annually like february to april for expansions would be very very good while you were going off on uh destiny mm -hmm. uh there was a blue box game studios update would you like oh to sure update? please it's uh, two tweets. <clears throat> we are still working to resolve the issues we are facing. We want to remind you that we are a small studio without the wide resources to quickly resolve an issue. We want to deliver a highly polished product and a good representation of the game that functions as intended. We won't be delaying the patch to a specific date, but release it as soon as we have resolved it. On behalf of the BBGS team and everyone involved with Abandoned, we thank you for the patience and apologize deeply for the inconvenience. Tomorrow. They don't want to say <laughs> tomorrow because then people are going to be like, oh, PT, but it's tomorrow. I have... 
I've never felt the calling for a cigarette, but I, I think I might need to buy some after this. You know what I'm saying? I think I might need to look like Ben Affleck <laughs> on, my, <laughs> on my porch. Like, fucking God. Oh, man. But uh, besides that, you know, shout out to Destiny. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to that. I know you've been enjoying those 60 frames, but I'm telling you, man, the 60 frames were something else, man. That yeah, was a little nice, yeah. it's an extra sauce. Mm. Mm -hmm. So good. So Very good. Nice. I will say, but, if you were curious about the story stuff and this fall is lightish for you um which it could potentially be um the next season is a long one because they planned for season 15 which starts this month and then witch queen in november that was the plan and then the witch queen got pushed so this season is going to be long because like okay they pushed witch, witch queen to like allow that development to be as good as it can be so they're not going to just make a new season out of nowhere so this current season is probably good times for power level catch up um i'm pretty sure the seasonal story stuff should be sticking around if you feel like running those missions because there's like some pretty major changes for some of the cast of <laughs> this, this game since beyond light launched and when witch queen's going to come out so um and it's all Pretty, as far as I know, based off of the two seasons I played through in the span of a month, I think you can probably get through the season story content in probably like two, three nights. Okay. So okay, we'll see. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The like biggest thing that's calling me is the uh, Crucible stuff for sure. Mm -hmm. For sure, that one definitely it's like off. Now that they they, they like fix that, let's let's. Mm. Oh, and yeah, I'm down. I'm down. Before we move on, I will say at last week on the This Week at Bungie blog, um, they made a big deal. They were like, hey, we know a lot of you like PvP, and we know we don't really do anything with PvP ever, but <laughs> um, they're like onboarding a lot of staff to have a dedicated PvP team in the future, and they think that sometime next year there should be a new crucible map a couple of returning maps from destiny one and um just the balance of pvp and like the the workload of pvp is going to be more snappy about listening to the community okay. which is That's very great. exciting um yeah yeah because since the activision split the pvp team that they did have has been working on a different game so uh yeah oh is that the one that got the 500 million came to mind, but I don't, I'm not sure that that seems kind of ridiculous. Yeah. I think that's but, a different um, game. Bungie has a couple games that they're working on right now. Oh, oh, there's multiple. Oh, yeah. shit. Okay. There's multiple. Okay. I, I, I thought it was just two. Like, no. I just thought it was Destiny and the other IP. Okay. Well, there's three. Okay. Yeah. Not, much. not to go off on a, a Bungie tangent, but did you ever hear about one of the rumors? Because I don't it, think so. Based off of some of the hiring criteria seems likely they're making some kind of hero shooter so okay i don't know like hero okay. shooters live yeah. and die by characters right if you have Absolutely. if you have destiny and you have all those characters maybe you make a destiny hero shooter plays Interesting. like zavala shax kate six ikora like maybe maybe it's a hey. MOBA even i don't know but like hero type gameplay if that's how we get kate six back i'm 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 fucking in. Kate seven to reboot. <laughs> yeah. So, fuck it. I'm in. I'm in. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Hero shooter. Yeah. Okay. That was that was a rumor. I like mean, I think eight months ago. Yeah. So, I think I think that could work. Yeah. It's it's Bungie. They mm -hmm. make great first person gameplay. I remember back in the day, I said I would want Destiny. I said that I want Destiny to be in third person. That's that. I would like to revoke that statement. Bring entirely. a sword and then it turns third person. There you go. Or that. Yep. Um. Yeah. So. Yeah, we'll, we'll keep an eye out for the future of that. But um, we're talking sci-fi. Uh, I, I can make this very quick because we were just talking about Destiny. It's a natural one. I beat the Halo trilogy. So Indeed. Indeed. Congratulations, Spartan. Thank you. Thank you. Um, that is one of the most consistent and greatest trilogies I've ever played in gaming. Easily. Far and away. Yeah, love to see it you love to see it like i really love halo one like there my main criticism of halo one was that some of the level design was a little confusing shooting felt really good like there's no sprint so yeah it does feel like it's an older game because this was a pioneer of this genre but 
I think in context of the way the enemies work and everything, the no sprinting and stuff of the time works because it never felt like it was acting against me actively. I didn't feel like I was being... I didn't feel like any of my failures were because of what the game wasn't doing. You know, like I felt competent based off of the rules of that world. Um, so that was like my only criticism of the first game was confusing levels. Halo 2 paced incredibly. Uh, I'm very surprised for a, what, 2005 game, 2004, that they did a literal like, hey, you know that super iconic character from the first game? You're barely playing as him. You're playing as this other guy who's an enemy of the first game, a member of the enemy faction. You got to play the majority of the game as him. It is split up, but like, you're barely playing as Chief in Halo 2. You're playing as the Arbiter, who is a member of the alien race who was trying to kill humanity in the first game. So they literally do like a whole us versus them who is the bad guy story in Halo 2 in like 2000 whenever. That surprised the hell out of me. Interesting. And then Halo 3. Halo 3 is interesting because Halo 1 is really good and Halo 2 has a very abrupt ending but it works and it feels like a first act and Halo 3 is like the amount of payoff that I wish the Rise of Skywalker was like mm. it like there's it's breakneck pace every level was super super well realized the gameplay was the best in the series and music set pieces uh all of it was like firing on all cylinders halo 3 i think is a masterpiece and that is a fantastic video game and what an end to this bungee trilogy like my god it, it was surprised the hell out of me in 2021 you love to see it you love to see it of course, everyone go check out Christian Buckley's video on Sunday. Oh, yeah. Something about Halo, a PlayStation needing a Halo. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hopefully, so check it out. The pitch for that, because you and I, again, we talked about this before. We grew up listening to games media around the same time period. And one of the popular talking points was like, does, does PlayStation need an answer to Halo? Um, and I was thinking about that a lot after beating the trilogy where I, I came down on like I think they need a Halo but not in the fact that I think they need a sci-fi first person shooter with competitive multiplayer that's what I'm saying yeah they need a Halo where it's one of their pillars and it does not take itself too seriously like it is really just about fun the story is surprisingly has some depth to it but like there is unabashed fun in everything it's like every choice that was made in the story the character moments and gameplay is in service of okay but is this just going to be a fun thing to do and the the crux of that was like what i talked about in the video because like i think stuff like infamous and ratchet and clank do that really well but none of them are on that pillar of like a, this is a core foundation of yeah. this brand which i wish yeah. I, I wish they'd have yeah i'll even go from like a different like texture honestly with that and like, I just think that like, when you think of like, just like think about like part two, right? Think of like how fluid and how great Last of Us Part Two feels on the sticks from a third person perspective, right? Like, I just want that same TLC. And, and like, I'm not saying I want Night Dog to make a first person shooter. That's not what I'm saying. But like, I want like that. You know, th I don't think it's outlandish to say that there is a consistent quality across the first party, across the first party PlayStation games for the most part. Right. We can talk about Days Gone. You know, we 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 can bring up a lot of other games that, you know, maybe don't meet that meet that uh, standard quite as high. But like, I think from a general standpoint, there is a PlayStation bar of quality. And like, I would love to see a first person shooter finally get to that pinnacle w within first party. You know what I'm saying? Does that mean bring back SOCOM? Does that mean bring back Resistance? Which now I'm kind of feeling they should bring back Resistance low key. Mm -hmm. Like, do they do they try to do a kills on again i think that's a questionable choice but i guess they, that's the way they can go yeah. or a new ip you know what i'm saying but like i think above all else i think like seeing a first person shooter in that to also diversify the first party portfolio to to break the mold of like third person action adventure game i think it'd be super cool yeah i'm with I, you on that and yeah. even even when it comes to like what the answer was for like is this their answer like kill zone even like i talk about that too of like I thought Halo was going to be a super self-serious thing because people always said, 
Killzone is PlayStation's answer to Halo, and I saw Killzone be dark, gritty, gray, hyper-violent, super serious, expecting that because of that comparison people always made that that's what I get out of Halo. Halo is very playful and like very funny, and there's a lot of good humor in there. Like Halo, it's not super accurate, but like it feels like it has an MCU level of like there's stakes here, but like we're here to have a good time. Right. Where the kill zone thing is like, we're man of steel, you know. It's like we we can we can be serious, you know. Like that's yeah, that's where a lot of it came down for me too. So I honestly. Had a very good time with it. Uh, taking a brief break from streaming that series and then um, doing Reach 4 and 5 before Infinite comes out. So, looking forward Beautiful. to that. Beautiful. Beautiful. Um, hit me with I, another trilogy that you started off your experience with. You started off a trilogy. Um, we can pivot to that. Or do you want me to quickly go over the two ones that like are very minuscule and like I don't have like a ton to say? Sure. I'm saying if you want to do that. Um let's let's start with the the one I don't love. Uh Hunters Hunters Arena Legends. Mm -hmm. And yes, the Hunters is an apostrophe S. It's possessive. I'm not sure who Hunter is. <laughs> but that's how that's the name of the game. Uh so this launched on ps plus this month uh it has been in pc beta for i think around a year or over a year um so a lot of pc guys know this game uh but it launched ps plus this month for august if i think i'm pretty sure ps4 and ps5 i'm pretty sure um so i say at at least redeem it at your library at the minimum um but actually going into it it's a 30 player battle royale uh it's focused on melee combat and that's like the main kind of crux of it. You do have different characters that you can choose. Some are more better for long range. Some are, you know, more like of a brute style. Some are more of like your average warrior type of kit and everything. Um, and it's a, essentially like a PV, PV, PVE type of battle royale where you do have random NPCs on the map that you battle to get better equipment and rank yourself up to level 10 and like 10 and beyond um that way you can have the fights that you need to have in the end game with real players um Sounds as like they have also been doing the same thing yeah yeah it's it's a lot of people were saying saying it was very mobile like in the comments yeah so Sounds yeah like that, pokemon unite man i got like 10 hours in that thing <laughs> shit i guess damn like well, while i was playing it i i, I I wasn't thinking MOBA, mm -hmm. but it, it, yeah, I guess, I guess, yeah, it pretty much is a MOBA, yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, which, which, that's a pretty cool wrinkle in that game as well. Mm -hmm. um, but I just, you know, didn't find it that 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 great. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like when when I first saw it, I was like visually, I was like, you know what? Like obviously, I haven't played it yet, but it seems like it's gonna be the same story, the like same story as like Spellbreak, where like it's in a big genre battle royale that we all know, right? That we've seen countless times. Um, but as a different gameplay style with spell break, you're like casting spells and everything, and you're combining different spells to make better effects um, and stuff like that. Um, and in this game, you just have different people that you can pick to play as and stuff like that, whatever. Um, but like it, it like no one's going to, the world's not going to stop over spell break. You know, like to say that with all due respect, right? Like it's just another, you know, smaller tile that is cool, but it's it's not gonna really really light the world on fire. It's the same story here with Hunters Arena Legends, at least for me personally. You know, I'm sure there's people that love this game out there. Shout out to y'all, ten out of ten. Love to see it, but um I didn't find it that great, you know. Like I found the combat fun, but like not like super engaging and like you know, I don't mm -hmm. know. It was cool. Right, but like you know, it just it just wasn't like insanely fun, you know. Sure. But it's a game that functions. If you want to go try it out, I definitely recommend everyone go and try it out for sure, especially on PS Plus. You might as well. Um, but yeah, you know, it it, it 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 wasn't the greatest thing. And I have a full and I have a full review up on the channel if you want like more in depth points and everything. But that's pretty much the service level stuff I can say. So that's was cool. That's cool. Two questions for you before your next one. Yes. Uh, one, we're talking Battle Royale. Did you watch the Ariana Grande concert in Fortnite? I haven't yet. I've been I've been saving it, Christian, because look, you know, 
shout out to baby girl Ariana. Okay, mm-hmm. shout out to her first and foremost, right? So I'm just waiting. You know what? Maybe, maybe I'll watch it tonight. But like, how was it? How was it? Because I was really bummed I couldn't be there. Yeah, I was. I, I was really bummed. I missed the Travis Scott concert last year, so was I was like, I want to be here for this one. Uh, it was very cool. Um, it had like an opening act essentially of like there were other songs playing and then there was just like weird trippy stuff happening in game cool. um there's like a water slide like mario sunshine sort of hop on a thing and then you're just surfing down this half pipe that was really cool and um yeah she just played the hits from like her entire career kind of and it was Hell like yeah. cool animations to it it's, it probably was like 10 minutes long total um got nice. a cool umbrella out of it so that was fun Sick. Sick. uh the other question because you are talking about these uh hunters arena not super hot on it what do you know about the ascent i know it's a like asymmetric shooter um i've heard like mixed things honestly Mm -hmm. i've heard like i've heard some people really like it but like i think the biggest consensus i've heard like it's just like not that great um Mm -hmm. As far as I hear, but like it's not like other trash, you know. It's just yeah. like eh, yeah. so. So I've heard. So I've heard. I played about three hours of it, and I wanted to like talk about it on if we recorded last week, right? But yeah, it's 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 fine. It's like a team of eleven people. It's their first game. I think for that in mind, it looks be like really really good. It looks beautiful for that type of team. Um, yeah, the cyberpunk aesthetic they have nailed it. The music is really good too. Um, I like how it looks. Yeah, visually, visually seen, it yeah. looks really, really good. Um, and I played this on Series S Game Pass, but yeah, it looks great. It's apparently it's only like a ten-hour game from how long to beat. I'm not really invested in the story. I kind of don't like. It feels like it's just like trying really hard to be edgy cyberpunky. So, do I feel like just dealing with that for another seven hours so I can just beat this? Right maybe um i hear it's much more fun if you're playing with friends so i have some friends who have game pass that want to try the game but i think like mechanically as a game it's pretty fun shooting is fun it reminds me of uh hell divers kind of yes yeah like a loot loot based shoot 'em up kind of like it's kind of like that so shot the hell divers yeah it's I don't think it's winning any awards, but it's a game that I think if you have Game Pass and you like Diablo looter things, or if you just like cyberpunk vibes, check it out. I think it's solid. It's probably like a seven, but yeah, yeah. Cool. Anyway, love to see it. What is your other hit? Lego Builders Journey. Mm-hmm. This is a low game. You know, it's like uh, I think it's like three hours long. Like it's supposed to be super short. Um, I'm playing it via Apple Arcade shout out to that you know there's some there's some bangers on there's some bangers on apple arcade not a lot of bangers but there's some bangers on there um and i would call this one of them for sure uh so it's a very like it's a very peaceful game to play question like i i really actually recommend this to you low key you know what i'm saying like i wasn't like super big on legos as a kid right like obviously everyone knows what legos are right. but like i wasn't like you know, I didn't have a ton of Legos with ever growing up, um, but it kind of like tells this little story about, you know, a father and son and they're playing with Legos and stuff like that. And what you're doing is that like you're you're like essentially like solving environmental puzzles with Legos. Right. So you play like this, you know, like godlike figure where you're moving the Lego pieces and your objective is to move this little kid um, from point A to point B right and then point b is where the dad's at right so but this little kid can only step on this like specific yellow brick that he hops on right and it has to be a certain distance away so you're having to really like use the pieces that they give you in this level to really figure out how to get the point a to point b and make sure that you can move the yellow brick to move the sun to point b right that's essentially what the gameplay is and like they they the they do a lot of like really cool stuff with that and like they really they really test you a lot and really, you know, you got to really think about some of the levels like, damn, like how, like I was stuck on a few for upwards of like 20, 30 minutes sometimes like, damn, like I can't figure this out, you know, but then like eventually it clicks. And um, I think it's super cool. The music is great. Very, very like emotional moving music. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm trying to think like 
like like like de like depressing lo-fi is kind of what i would like describe it as you know what i'm saying um but it's it's really really a really beautiful game as well i know like on on pc i saw a video from a uh, digital foundry on pc it has like full ray tracing and everything and like all this fancy stuff because it's not that intensive of a game and it looks like drop dead gorgeous on pc like i would definitely recommend go and check it out but even on my iphone like i i think the game looks really great they do really cool stuff with lighting and everything um but um yeah like it's it's a really cool story in terms of like you know in the first few levels like you're playing with your dad and then this like red beacon like this like red beacon and like sound cue always comes up sometimes when you're outside of your house when you're um in a level and uh it's 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 your dad's work calling him to go work right mm. so it's kind of like a story of like you know like playing with a playful type of dynamic with your legos and everything with your son but then having to face the realities of you having to go to work yeah that... and stuff like that like i think it's a really really cool thing that they did with it um story-wise like it's not like the most in-depth story but it's a thing that i think a lot of people can relate to whether you're yeah. a dad or a son right like mm -hmm. i remember my dad dipping for work and be like oh shit well you know did you, you work. All right. did you ever see the lego movie i did because yeah. that kind of reminds me of like the whole not twist yeah like the, the thing at the end it's like oh the the will ferrell villain lego guy is like the kid's dad it's because like he yeah. doesn't play with his kid like interesting for sure yeah yeah I, yeah I've heard got, enough about it that I, I do think I will probably get to it by the end of the year. But um, yeah, it's it yeah. seems cool. It's nice. I love a good puzzle game. Yeah, I'm I'm probably I think like halfway through as far as I'm aware. Um, but I've been playing it just be right before bed or whatever, and and it's been it's been super fun. You know, just just a nice super chill game. Um, so yeah, I've been I, I've been really liking it. I'll definitely recommend it for sure. You know, but uh, but yeah. I, I think it's a cool game. And if you have an iPhone, if you have Apple Arcade, check it out. Um, I, I know it's on PC. I don't think it's on consoles yet, as far as I'm aware. But there's a way to play it. Yeah, Cool stuff. Cool stuff. Um, the last thing I'll throw out here, I'll have more to say on this next week, because I'll probably have it beaten by then. But I did start the original Psychonauts, finally, mm. on uh, Xbox. And Kevin, let me tell you. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Uh, uh oh, oh no, 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 no! no. I, oh, I don't, okay, I don't okay, know how good. to say this okay. nicely. That PS4 version is like terrible. Like, mm. Mm. Psychonauts out of the PS2 to PS4 games I played was probably the worst one. It's worse than like Jack One. I, th I mean, Jack One out of the trilogy, I think was the best performing one, but like Jack Two was bad. Oh, sorry, Jack. I know one of them was really bad. Right, yeah, yeah. So, the port, yeah. Psychonauts, like, it's a platformer on PS4. I felt like when I jumped, I wasn't jumping. Like, it, like the frame rate was a hindrance that much that, like, it was just messy. The lighting looked horrible on PS4. Like, the main character looked like he had a spotlight, like a campfire light beneath his face the entire time. Like a ghost story thing. It looked yeah. ugly as hell. And on Xbox, it's been very nice. I It's a rock solid frame rate um it controls feel very tight i made it much farther than i did that first time i tried it on ps4 so uh, i'm loving it i think it's hilarious i think it's one of the strongest openings to a platformer i've ever done so looking forward to beating it and then next week i'll have full thoughts for sure good to hear good to hear good to hear uh i think that is everything we've been playing so kevin you hear about this Hear about what? There is Mass Effect though, but you know. Oh yes, of course, Mass Effect. <laughs> I'm let sorry, me be I kind of brief. Covered, I yeah. thought we covered it already. My bad. No, yeah. Let let me be brief. I'm like two and a half hours in. Mm -hmm. Um, I've now been endowed as a uh, Spectre. Now, we we have a clear mission. We know what's going on, right? We're uh catching Saren. There we go. We're on. The, we're on the move. Uh, I got. I'm I'm pretty surprised at how like I think you meet most of your squad in the Citadel, mm -hmm. right? Like I think I'm missing one person, but I have like Rex. I have um uh uh fuck. I want to say <laughs> names in case you don't have this person. 
Yeah, I'm forgetting the Ashley, yep. but she was there in the first mission. Um, but you got a but K yeah, name. like, huh? You got a K name? I have Kaden. Yep. Yeah, Kaden. He was in the first mission too. You got an L. Liara, I'm missing, but I have her mission to go get. Her. Okay. Okay. You know what I'm saying? You got a G. Is that something? G. Garrus? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I like I, Garrus. I, okay, I think I know. I like Garrus. I like. I like Garrus a lot. Garrus is cool. Mm -hmm. Rex is growing on me. I think I like Rex. Um, Caden's cabin. You know, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not feeling Caden that much. You know what I'm saying? Ashley, I've been liking Ashley a lot. Me and me, me and Ashley got. Ashley sounds like Mila Kunis. Oh really? T tell me I'm wrong. I don't go back and listen to Ashley. <laughs> well, it's it's funny because she sounds like Mila Kunis. My so only uh, association with her is um, the motion comic. And two, right. So like I, okay. like, I can't speak to her fully. Um, same right. with a, a couple other characters, but like, yeah. So it sounds like Garrus is the early favorite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Garrus and Ashley, I like a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I mean, I'm just really impressed at like how much information they convey to me early on in the span of like maybe 20 minutes, mm -hmm. right? Of like where humanity is at in the galaxy what is a mass relay what caused this you know like this propelment into human uh technology to you know for us to to like reach this point how fast we are developing how other alien species don't like that uh we have alien species that just do not like humans you know what i'm saying um they conveyed that like where commander shepherd came from which isn't like the most in depth backstory, but like how you know he's already seen some stuff. Ab yeah. About ab by the time you play as him and everything, um, I'm really, really, really liking it. Like I'm, I'm really enjoying it so far. And like what I found interesting was that like I'm viewing it already less as like a third person shooter, right? Which I thought like that'd be kind of like the main calling a little bit, but. I really am viewing it kind of more of like a telltale experience. Like, yo, yeah. just like I'm, I, I am happy with when I'm in combat, and I'm also happy talking to you know Garrus about stuff mm -hmm. in dialogue trees and just getting into that and then seeing. Um, I think yeah. So overall, that's been good. I, I'm a specter. I, uh, I'm gonna go off on one little bit of story, right? Mm -hmm. And it was an assignment, which I think is side quest in Mass Effect 1. I think that's how it's translating, right? Um, there was a side quest where when we did what we did on the first mission uh, on Eden Prime, right? Uh, one of the soldiers, I believe in the Alliance, was killed, this female. And I meet her husband in the Citadel. Mm -hmm. And he's upset because the alliance is keeping his wife's body from eden prime for testing because i guess the uh i forgot the enemy faction uh the dregs something like that the the enemy faction used the weapon technology on this lady to kill her that the alliance wants to study the body to learn more about their technology and their weaponry to you know try and counteract it in the future right but the husband just wants the body to bury her mm -hmm. to just bury his wife and so i go up to the guy that's holding the body first um before i became a specter right and he's just not having it. he's like no bro it's for military purposes we gotta study uh, uh. so i'm like damn okay well fuck like i really want this husband to bury his wife or whatever so I'm like, you know what? I'll just, I'll just, it seems like there's no way I can convince this guy. I'll figure it out later. So I go do some other stuff. I do some more like main mission stuff within the area. I become a specter. And then I noticed that like my like charm went up a little bit. I'm like, okay, all right. Maybe, maybe, maybe I can go back there. And maybe now that, I mean, you're going to say, you're going to say no to, the first quote unquote second like human specter like mm -hmm. come on man like like there's 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 no shot so i go and i'm able to convince him because there's more dialogue trees that open because my charm got increased 
and I'm able to convince him to release the body to the husband. Mm-hmm. And like, it's little shit like that that I'm like, oh fuck. If this is like throughout the entire game series, I think we have something serious here. Yeah. I think we have a I think we have something serious here. Where it's like, oh shit. That was fucking awesome. Like, mm-hmm. like, like, like that was great, you know? Like, um, just just having that, like, you know, hey, come back to it later. Let's see if things change, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and like the side quest feeling like living, breathing stuff. And um also I'm a little uh conspicuous about do you know what the timekeepers? These like machines in the um in the I'm citadel. I'm not sure. Like yeah, we're like told not to mess with them, but then mm-hmm. I got another assignment where it's like, hey, here's the scanner, do some research for me on the Lolo, mm-hmm. and you won't get in trouble because you're a specter. Like, so you you can probably do what you want, and they're probably not gonna probably not gonna say anything about it. Right. So there's just a lot of really cool stuff in that. So far, I'm very much enjoying myself in this game. Yeah. And I feel the pull very, very, very high. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm excited for you to get to two. Because two, I think, is just all that stuff cranked up, and then combat is even better. Like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, if I'm really enjoying Mass Effect One this much, mm-hmm. and this is like the oldest one, the one that people regard. I mean, besides Mass Effect Three, I guess, but like, you know, yeah. the one that is like the Uncharted one of right. the trilogy. I think, I think we're in good hands, bro. I yeah. think this could be interesting. I think this could be very interesting. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, and I'm excited for you I'm to see, it. like. Do you think you're going to reset on choices at all or like whatever happens, happens? I want to do b- b- whatever happens, happens. Okay. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to, I want to very much like role play this thing. Sure. You sure, know what sure. I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm, I didn't even know that you could reset stuff. I didn't even know that. I mean, you could like save scum it of like upload a save to a cloud nah. before a, a choice. And then like, if you don't like the outcome, like, ah, oh, fuck no. And like reload it. And, like that's a, that's a nah. strategy. Yeah. Like, I only changed my name. Like, I am Kevin Shepard mm-hmm. in this, you know? But, like, I I very much did that because, like, I, I, I want this to be, like, my journey. Right. With you... And, like, I don't want any other right. way, you know? Did you go default uh, Shepard appearance? I did. Yeah, okay. I did. I did. Cool. Shout out to Fem Shep. Shout out to Fem Shep. But I was mm-hmm. feeling a little bit more uh, uh, male Shepard. Sure. Know? But definitely. Well, I'm excited to hear the further thoughts i plan on doing my trilogy run through probably in september i'll start it so looking forward to an eventual yeah, discussion but yeah i'm glad you're so like far, so, good. so far so good fox aaron mm-hmm. piece of shit uh <laughs> well kevin did you hear about this hear about what uh it's the week of the indies because we got an id at xbox show yesterday and a nintendo indie world today um quick highlight from the id at xbox show i will shout this game out every time i have the chance to ollie ollie world looks fantastic it's a new skateboarding game if you own a vita you're probably familiar with ollie ollie just the the 2d platformer skateboarding game that was like pixelated very fun underrated game you you probably have one of them on playstation plus i recommend it it's very arcadey very very fun Ollie Ollie World is looking really good. Like, the jump from... Because, like, 1 and 2 are both, like, basically 8-bit skateboarding platformers that are 2D, right? Right. This is messing with... It's still 2D, like, it's a side-scroller, but it's got, like, depth to it. Like, you can reach the end of a course, and then there's a... Like, a, a ramp that you can, like, do a vert jump on, and then come down on the other side of it, and then go left towards the level, so, like, the level keeps going... Um, there's like really interesting things with different planes of depth. Uh, the art style looks fantastic. It looks like a like Adventure Time style cartoon sort of looking thing. Um, the customization they highlighted at the show the other day looks very in depth. You can basically make whoever you want. They can look however you want. And the like the reputation I think precedes it when it comes to the way the game plays because it is addictingly fun. So if that carries over. If they can expand on that and visually it just becomes more of a fleshed out, awesome, unique skateboarding game, uh, I can't wait to play it. It's supposed to be coming out this winter. They haven't had a solid date on it yet, but uh, if you like, honestly, if you like platformers, if you like arcadey platformers as well, this is probably one to check out, even if you're not a skateboarding fan. If you are a skateboarding fan, 
absolutely play this game, but uh, yeah, it looked fantastic. That was the highlight from yesterday's Xbox thing for me. Beautiful. Shout out to that. Did you ever play Oli Oli? I feel like I did. Mm -hmm. I feel like I I didn't like beat it or anything, but like I feel like yeah, I messed yeah. around with it. Like I remember how the gameplay looks on Vita. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So and I gotta check if I, one of them is definitely on PS Plus, but I, I don't know if it's the first one or the sequel. I have Oli Oli two from Plus. I know. Okay, so maybe it's a sequel. Maybe I'm thinking of the sequel, but mm -hmm. I do recall that, and I can't visualize it. Yeah, I remember. Sure. Um, also, uh, big news the other day, they also said Stardew Valley is coming to Game Pass next month, as well as uh, I think the other Origami game, because Origami 2 is already coming to the service, and cool. a few other updates and some things. Um, there was another trailer for that uh, Planet of Lana, I think, but it was like the same one, I think. Mm. So oh, it was yeah. just like a reminder, so it's good to see that's getting more coverage still. But yeah, today, there was the Nintendo Indie World Showcase, which was 20 minutes Dang. long. Had a lot of stuff in it. Um, Banger. Did you get? Banger. Did you watch it? Did you see Twitter? I, I didn't watch it, but Nibel yes. hit me up with the with the good shits. Um, it that was a stacked fucking shot. That's what I'm talking about. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. And this just live as yo. I, I I I tweeted out honestly. The Switch is the indie machine, man. Like period. Like they mm, killing it, killing it. Shout out to them. Yeah. Shout out to them. So. I'll quickly run through what happened at the showcase. We can give what highlights we saw if we're picking any of the shadow drops out because there were shadow drops today. Um, they opened with Bomb Rush Cyberfunk, which is basically Jet Set Radio, but made in 2021 and looks fantastic. That got a 2022 date. It is a timed console exclusive. So when that drops early next year, we'll absolutely be playing that again. Everything I said about Ali Ali World can probably be translated to this as well. It looks like a very good stylistic, great music, uh, vibrant poppy colors, and very fluid traversal gameplay for uh, getting around, doing your graffiti everywhere. So it looks very good. Um, Toem showed up there. Uh, I feel like I've seen this game before. I don't know if this was a PlayStation indie in the past. But maybe i've it, seen it it kind of looks familiar yeah it kind of looks familiar yeah um, interesting it's a game about taking pictures it's a black and white game isometric looks very charming comes in coming out fall 2021 uh, Are, do we have to have a new genre name like for the pokemon snaps the seasons the toem now like do we need a a photo genre like like how do we define that now you insta games insta games Instagrams. I threw an R in there, but we can we can drop the R. Because Insta, Insta games could be a lot of things, you know. Yeah, you're right. Okay, Instagrams. I kind of fuck with that. I like that. I like that. You know what? Let let's 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 start it. New it's an Instagram. Yes, it's a Instagram. Y'all know what it is. Mm -hmm. It's a photo. It's a game about photos. Mm -hmm. Taking photos. That works. I, I like know. It. I know. Arachnid is very big on in-game photography, but does he have an she interest is. in like? games about photography do you know i don't know i'll i'll ask him because i feel like that would that that would make a lot of sense yeah. he 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 loves a good photo mode yes mm -hmm. sir so i feel like he he would he would jive he would jive with one of these for sure yeah for sure uh loop hero a devolver digital joint that blew up early this year i think on pc is coming to switch it's a game where you like place dungeon panels and like you're trying to do a run it's kind of a roguelike um I remember it got a lot of conversation early this year. Okay. Um, Far Changing Tides showed up. That's an interesting sailing 2D game. Uh, Necro Barista Final Pour Extended Director's Cut out later today. It's a uh, looks like a story based game where you're a barista serving dead people. So that's cool. Very cool. Uh, Garden Story, a game that has popped up a lot it's like an adventure -y. you're in a town very cutesy your plan is a grape um i think there's some farming elements here shadow drop today time console exclusive you can play that now cool i'm curious about this one i'm gonna see what the impressions are but i this is a game that's popped up a fair amount in the past that i had an interest in so yeah gonna hear the reviews 
Another one that has had a lot of hype for a while now, Boyfriend Dungeon, is out now on Switch. Do you remember this one this, from last year? Yeah. Is this the one where your weapons represent a gentleman in your life, right? And you choose mm -hmm. that? Or am I thinking of the wrong game? No, that's the that's, right game. That's what it is, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, this one, I, I, I'm like kind of intrigued about it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I actually will play it, but mm -hmm. I've heard... I've heard good things. So. Yeah, like it looks really yeah. interesting. It's yeah. a dungeon crawler. Uh, like you go into dungeons, you fight enemies, you get loot, you fight bosses, and then there's the like out of dungeon experience where it is, I think, kind of persona y, where like you have cutscenes and stuff with your weapons when they're in their human form based off of like how much you use them in the dungeon and like building up that relationship. So it seems like a very interesting game. I'm sure it's going to have a, a big following this year. Um, speaking of Axiom Verge 2, follow up to the breakout Metroidvania that was like one of the first big indie games, I feel like. Um, yes, sir. Out today on Switch. So, yes, sir. Also on other consoles, too. Mm -hmm. I think yeah, everything else, yeah. PS5 is coming said, later, I think they said. PS5 is coming later, yeah, which I can't imagine like the boost that you're going to get on PS5 to be that insane, right? But. I'm just going to wait, I guess, for the PS5 version. I, I guess I might as well. Um, but I did buy the first Axiom Verge this week. I saw it on sale for like six bucks. And they had something about Axiom Verge 2 on the blog earlier this week. So that's what kind of got me to just buy the first one. Because mm -hmm. um, I swore I, I, I had it on Vita. I looked at my library. I don't. I'm not sure how I came to that conclusion. But uh, I just bought it for the, uh, the first game before Axiom Verge 2 comes out. Um, but cool that it's out right now. Definitely. Yeah. Super cool. It definitely looks up my alley. It's it's definitely a Kevin ass 2D game, so I'm fucking down for that. So. Sure. Definitely. We also got a new look at Shovel Knight Pocket Dungeon. It is a puzzle slash dungeon crawler hybrid coming out this holiday. The Shovel Knight train is not stopping. Um, no, it's not. Did you ever mess with any of the Shovel Knights? A little bit. A little bit. Not super extensive, but maybe I'll come around to it. I know it's kind of like Kev, how you not play Shovel Knight as one of like the biggest indie games ever? Mm -hmm. um, Did you know in the PlayStation play. version, uh, you can fight Kratos and you can get the Blitz Chaos? Are you serious? I'm 100% serious. I did it on the PS4 version. I didn't know that. And it's like within the first like three hours you can do this. So you can play that entire game with the Blitz of Chaos if you wanted. Oh, fuck. That really changes things. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it, it's not a super long game. Shovel Knight is really good. I'm sure you would enjoy it good to know yeah. yeah i think i have it you probably do. that one i think i definitely have yeah like i think i have it in the presentation they were like shovel knight turned seven this year and i was like oh my god <laughs> um, but yeah you i have shovel knight you probably have shovel knight most people probably yeah. have shovel knight if they follow this space um yeah. and if you bought it early like if you bought it before 2017 i'm pretty sure uh, it comes with all the campaigns as well. So oh, there's like sick. a bunch of different characters with their own campaigns. I'm sure you have that. So. Yeah, that's neat. Islanders console edition came out later today on Switch. Uh, it is a island management game. You're building settlements, it looks like. Uh, we got a new look at Metal Slug Tactics, the revival of the Metal Slug IP that was revealed, I think, at Summer Game Fest. And um, does, there's no specific date on that other than 2022 so you can look forward yeah. to that on switch uh looks cool very exciting one tetris effect connected it's coming to switch so uh yes sir that yes, is a sir. great game i paid full price for that the day it came out i bought a vr headset for that game mm. it's a great game mm. i love tetris it's a great version of tetris definitely play it. yeah this is a this is a day one because like I've played, everyone's played Tetris, right? Yeah. But like, I feel like I haven't played it from an adult standpoint mm -hmm. to really like understand why it's respected. I know and definitely respect it. I respect Tetris absolutely. Yeah. But like, I haven't really first and foremost gone to it from like a from like a more of a gamer standpoint, like to really like understand what makes Tetris amazing. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um so i'm very excited to do this um i hear from multiple people that like there's a point where like 
tears will be shed and i'm down for that experience you know what i'm saying i love me some tears you know what mm-hmm. i'm saying so uh excited for this yeah definitely definitely excited yeah yeah i'm i love tetris uh easily it's like clearly it's one of the best games ever made i think and tetris effect is a really fun version of it um uh just so you know my high score in tetris effect is 427,776 so good luck trying to beat that that took me a long time to get up to that um my current rank in tetris effect i think is around level 50 i'm a veteran so okay good okay. luck okay i see i see i see i'm i'm just i'm just looking to just enjoy the ride <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. oh man mm-hmm. and you'll be good able stuff. to on october 8th indeed. indeed uh we also have a montage of other stuff that came out today uh, like Curious Expedition 2, we got a good look at Astro Near. This was a fun space game that blew up a couple years ago on PC. I think it's on Xbox as well. Um, 100 Days Winemaking Simulator, Slime Rancher, Lumberjack, your uh, Lumberjack Bear, and Gang Beasts. So, lots of popular ones hitting the Switch, and they closed off with something that i've been waiting for a date for a very long time in this game eastward from chucklefish the publishers of stardew valley uh wargroove this is their next this is the next game it is very very enticing i think this is probably something that would be up your alley as well i don't know if you've been following eastward at all or if this is your first exposure to it but september 16th time console exclusive what did you think of eastward yeah, this might be my first exposure. I'm not. I don't think I've seen this before, but it looks interesting. I just yeah, don't know so a lot about it to be honest. Yeah. Essentially, it's you're playing as an older man who finds a young girl in a mine in sort of a future apocalyptic, post-apocalyptic society, and then okay. you have to travel eastward. That's the point of it. So it, people compared it to like Last of Us early on when it was announced of like, it's, hey, it's like an indie Last like of it. Us. It's a more yeah. poppy, colorful, different, di- very different vibe, very different um, approach to its tone, but still like that sort of relationship you're building by traveling and having combat and puzzles and stuff like that. It seems like it's a mix of its inspirations being like a Zelda game, a earthbound potentially um last of us to a story extent like it looks really great and it's coming out pretty soon so love to see a quick announcement to release and i'll absolutely be checking this one out for sure so you'll love to see it you'll do you think it. uh do you have a highlight from the indie showcase today yeah uh highlight i mean um it it was cool acting verse 2 got a shadow drop today that was that was that's really cool they got a lot of people talking um tetris was up there for sure um yeah honestly i'd say those two were like the ones that caught my attention the most mm. um for sure and just the, uh, it just you know i think i said recently to you that you're like i haven't touched my switch in a while sorry touch my i haven't touched my switch in a while like it's been, it's been a hot minute. I think it was um, when I played a uh, Haven in January. I think that's the, honestly the last time I touched anything on my Switch. I think Damn. so. It's cool to get some games of over there now as well. Um, so I'm excited. I'm excited. Mm-hmm. Good Very stuff. Nice. Good stuff. So, look forward to a lot of indie talks in the future. I like. I genuinely, I think, based off of what I've seen of Eastward, Eastward could be one that like hangs around in conversations in December. Interesting. So, as long as it hits, so, yeah, I think it will. But one I one indie I do want is that Metal Gear esque game. I forgot what's oh, called. Oh yeah, um, I want that on more platforms, bro. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, like there there was a physical Vita release, but now they're done. Like they 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 can't make more. <laughs> they can't make more video cop. Like it's a wrap, mm-hmm. you know. So. I really want that game to go to other stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. So, we'll see. Maybe I forgot what it was called though. Yeah. Yeah, I I forgot what it was too. Um so with that we have reached pots. Pots, 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 pots. pots Game is heavy discussion episode this week. Um because we have pots 
turning the focus to two new multiplayer games that have been getting some pretty strong reception on Twitter, Twitch, the internet, gaming space. Uh, each of us have played one of them, so we can just give general impressions, questions we have for each other about each game. Um, them being Back for Blood, the private pre-order beta was this past weekend. A friend of mine pre-ordered it and got a batch of codes to like give to friends to play with, so I was able to hop into that. The open beta is this coming weekend for anybody who wants to try it. Um, and the other game being Splitgate, a free-to-play game that really blew up. And, uh, yes, sir. It yes, has sir. blown up so much that uh, they have queue times for their stuff because they just did not expect it to be this big. So, yep. Those are the two major things going on right now. Um, so, before we dive in, Kevin, Splitgate is an early access at the moment. Is that what it is? I believe officially it's in beta. Yeah, it's in it's in beta officially. Uh, it was supposed to be like officially out by now, but because of those server issues that you uh, uh, said and everything, they pushed the release of it. I think it's gonna, I think it's gonna be like later this month. Like I don't okay. think it's too far away from like the official like version 1.0 launch um, as a whole. But um, but yeah, like I think the correct term would would be beta. I think they would say like okay. different 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 from early access, I guess. Okay, but, sure. Yeah, I wasn't yeah. sure because I know it is free to play. There's no like paid yeah. speed of this, right? Yeah, like it's still gonna be free to play when it launches and when it launches and stuff. Um, and there's like skins and stuff like that, that that they're gonna work towards monetizing and stuff like that. Like that's how they would do it, right? Um, but yeah, free to play, free to play. So there's that game. I think you probably would you say that you have a better idea of what Splitgate will be. When it comes out, like the difference is probably not going to be that major. Oh yeah, yeah. Like um, like there won't be a huge change. I don't think. Like I think there's going to be more content and like more maps and stuff like that. Sure. Um, because like, I mean, like we, I mean, there's a really good amount of maps and different weapons on those maps that you can mess with and everything. And like I think the weapon roster is really, really, really fun to use from across mm -hmm. the board. Um, uh, but but yeah, like I think we we've we've I think seen like we'll say like sixty percent, seventy percent of the game probably. Okay. You know, so, as far as I can tell. I mean, like who knows? Mm -hmm. Fuck it. Like, got I don't know. But there's 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 a lot there in the beta for sure. Right. So as, from a player's perspective, you're probably playing like a demo of the final product. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because with with Back for Blood, um, it was a beta, um, for a game that comes out in October, and I think things could probably change a fair amount because there was a pretty in-depth survey after the beta uh experience when i closed out um they threw a qr code up so i feel like what i played is less representative and i there's less stuff to speak on with back for blood so i can get back for blood out of the way and then we can go off on Splitgate if you want yeah 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 so with back for blood i was never a left for dead person were you mm -hmm. no no okay i was a cod zombies guy sure yeah i, I was definitely. too that was that was my yeah. zombie fix back in the day definitely yep. and like yep. infected in halo and stuff like that like i would call of duty zombies was like my main source and <laughs> red dead on the nightmare that was a very good uh wave based multiplayer um back for blood is turtle rock studios who has former left for dead developers it is essentially Left 4 Dead 3. Um, what is interesting about Left 4 Dead compared to something like A Cod Zombies is that Left 4 Dead has kind of a campaign to it where it's level based. It's not like Horde wave based. Uh, there's locations. You have objectives point A to point B of the level doing certain objectives to keep progressing. Um, okay. It is heavily squad based. I played it with uh, two friends. You can play with up to four. And I played on the, the basic difficulty, and at least on console, I played on PS4 Pro, um, aim assist felt very, very generous, and, like, I took it off, and I was trying to, like, mess with settings enough so I could find a comfortable level for me, 
I don't know if I found it, but I, I wanted the game to be a bit harder, so I turned off aim assist. But from what I've heard with other people that have played the game, is that if you play it on the difficulty one above the default, there's much more of a challenge. So this upcoming weekend, I will be playing it on that difficulty, I think, to get a better right. idea. But right. with a mix of the lowest basic difficulty and then um, aim assist, I felt like I wasn't struggling too much. But if my team was like a little sloppy, we absolutely got wiped. I like we did not beat all the missions in the first thing because we did d die like pretty frequently in a couple locations. So um, as far as challenge goes, I think it's in a good spot and I will just personally probably be bumping it up. So I have to think a bit more with my team and coordination. Yeah. And I like that. It's like I, I do like cooperative, very heavily communication, what's going on multiplayer. So to have that in a campaign zombie type game is fun. And I think Back for Blood has a really good um, rhythm to it in terms of getting through a level, finding collectibles, getting kills, picking a weapon you like early on, because... The way progression works is they frame it around runs and when you start a run i believe you're progressing through the story um that's broken up into acts several missions within an act um you choose your character the beta has i think five to pick from and i think the full game has maybe around like 12 to 15 i'm not sure uh, they each have their own special abilities um i forget who i played his name but he had um his ability was he had like a machete as his melee weapon and he had some like buff towards his stamina i think um so you pick your character you start a run and as you're progressing you are earning money you're finding currency in the the levels you're in you're finding weapons you like and you can find like scopes you can find attachments throughout the levels and then when you reach the end of a level you find a safe room beginning of the ne beginning of the next level takes place in that safe room and they let you open up like a shop kind of like how rogue company does it how like csgo does it right okay where there's a shop rotating items on every death it's like okay what kind of gun do you want um you can there's like snipers there's whatever the shop has in store for you there's a few to pick from um med kits defibrillators anything that you think could help you on that next run to the next save room so i don't like it's not roguelikey because there is a solid progression on deaths you keep your currency but i believe on deaths you lose your equipment so you have to be smart about the guns you're choosing and what you're investing in okay because gotcha. like if I pick up a gun I really like in mission one and then we get to mission seven and we die and we have to start in the mission seven save room, it's like, okay, well shit, now I'm at a disadvantage because I don't have my kitted out gun. I'm at the right. mercy of the RNG gods of this shop. Snipers only, I, I gotta make do, you know, like, so there is a pressure to try and not go down and try it. Like, okay. there's a really, really fun level to it that I feel like I haven't gotten in a cooperative experience in a long time. So technically i think there's still a few things to to iron out there's a few like kinks in the performance but between now and october i think they can probably iron that out fine and i'll be playing it on my xbox because it's day one game pass so hopefully the next gen buff helps me a little bit but um yeah i had a really good time uh running the campaign and that's just the pve that's i played so far but yeah is there pvp there is yeah so the oh, way pvp know. works is um i th i think it's uh there's two rounds it is one round where it's your team of humans trying to survive and get kills of zombies and then there is a opposing team that are playing as the zombies um obviously there's like normal um npc zombies that are like running around but there's also in the mix the opposing team and they're trying to prevent you they're trying to kill you steal your kills stuff like that so you can't get a higher score than them then you swap sides on the second round and in the end whoever got the higher score is the winner of that match so i see gotcha, yeah. gotcha. I, I haven't checked it out yet but um i'm again that's on the list for this weekend because mainly last weekend was the pve stuff 
learning the game, learning the card system, which yes, there's cards, but it's not cards the way it seems. Like it's kind of like Battlefront cards where it's like uh, you can get cards as you progress, you can build a deck, and then at the beginning of each mission, before you go to the save room, they show you like a, a hand from your deck. It's like, okay, for this this round, what card do you want to add to your character's ability? So again, round one, it can be like, okay, first one, I'm going to take 10% stamina boost because I need to run faster in, this, in the early stages. Second round, I'll stack another stamina. Third one, now I want extra ammo. So like, it's not like a card, because I get turned off by card systems easily this is not one of the bad ones. I think this is a really good implementation of cards because they're basically skills that are kind of like Hades, okay. where it's like, right. right, this run, I'll have an extra stamina buff. So I, I really like the progression and I can see myself getting really invested in this game. So Beautiful. Good to hear. Good to hear. Definitely. Yeah. Like, I know like a lot of people were, 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 were like definitely enjoying it for sure. Um, do I have any questions about Back for Blood? Uh, do you think that like... It will have a staying power in spite of it launching next to a Halo launch, a Battlefield launch that a lot of people are definitely much looking forward to. Mm -hmm. um, I guess COD, but you know, COD's not looking great this year anyway. Um, like, do you do you think that like in like the in like the shooter space, like from more of like a more of like a broad standpoint, like? Do you think that Back for Blood is going to have that staying power just off of what you've played so far? Or do you think that you need to see the full game before they even like make that call? Or how are you feeling about it? I think it's going to be Turtle Rock's best performing game because their previous stuff, I can, I only know of one and it was uh, Evolve. Yeah, 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 Evolve. And there's no Left for Dead 3. People have wanted that forever. So I think at the very least from what i've heard they have satisfied that left for dead crowd so left for dead is a massive game and it was massive at the time the people who have been wanting that will be there for this game absolutely um yeah. and i think beyond that there's enough positive word of mouth i think from this beta weekend the fact that they are having an open beta this weekend is helpful and there's also the game pass element where you know yep there's that you have it I have it, so time. like I'll absolutely be playing it. And there's crossplay too, so um yeah, if a group of your friends have it wherever and then you know they'll be playing it because they have it for free or they're a huge fan of Love for Dead and buying it on Steam, and it's like, hey yeah, I don't feel bad spending up uh sixty bucks on this one because I know it's a game that's made way better with friends and my friends are absolutely gonna be playing it. So I think there's absolutely a world where it can have staying power as like the answer to left for dead in 2021 um compared to other games like i i don't i think it'll have longer legs than some of the ones you threw out there even though those are probably going to have larger launches if that makes sense yeah yeah like i see that yeah battlefield i feel like last generation since battlefield one battlefield did not have staying power really like people usually fell off those games pretty hard um after like a month or two yeah call of duty with the way it's sounding like maybe not and then people just fall back to warzone or still play modern warfare 2019 the way that people are still playing that game right like yeah i think the only thing out of the ones you threw out there like battlefield 2042 i think has a chance because of the way it's treating its legacy now and i think halo because it's going to be a like a great halo finally will probably still carry really well but um for back for blood i think it'll be uh again like the best thing for turtle rock and it will have long legs like people will probably be streaming and playing back for blood like a year or two from now i imagine because there's just no left for dead and this is the answer to that so left for dead at staying power so Good i point. feel like point. they nailed it so they probably will continue on with this i see i see so. yeah i think it's i think it's, i think it's gonna do good this fall like mm -hmm. back for blood and like i think it's launching a little bit earlier than 
like the real center of the fall, like November ish, right? I think it's yeah. launching in, in like October, I think, or I want to say it's October twelfth. October, yeah. Like I feel like it's gonna catch that early crowd leading into the big shit with mm. Battlefield and Halo, etc. So like I think it's gonna at least catch attention early on in that fall season when all eyes are on gaming in the fall. Um, so I, I think it's gonna be okay. I yeah. think it's gonna gonna have a nice healthy launch as far as what we've seen so far. Yeah. So, uh, very. I'd say strongly positive on it. It definitely has some issues, but I think, again, it's a beta that can get ironed out in time, mostly technical of, like, some weird animation bugs, and there's a little bit of jank to it, the way that it I always perceived a jankness to, like, Left 4 Dead. So I think, based off the feedback, uh, aiming on sticks could probably use a bit of a, a tuning to make it feel a little less handholdy and then right. just some technical issues and other than that i had a really fun time so beautiful. beautiful do you think you're gonna hop in the open beta this weekend yeah i'll i'll definitely make a point to check it out definitely mm -hmm. for sure for sure just check it out because like i mean like I, I never played left 4 dead back in the day i know you didn't either really right um so you know and i mean hey like i i like the horde based stuff um with zombies especially like that was kind of like my main bread and butter for sure um so yeah no like i'll like definitely go and check it out at least give it a fresh shake you know i'm not sure if i'm gonna buy it day one i don't think that's gonna be a purchase for me this fall but mm -hmm. oh give it a shot why not why nice not? um well, let's hear about splitgate then because splitgate uh is a free-to-play game that you seem very positive on and i imagine i guess i'll leave with the same question for you do you think that splitgate is gonna have uh staying power is this just another fall guys and among us it's gonna fall off within three months or what's up I think it'll have staying power. I, I I really really hope and think so for sure. Uh, last year I crowned, of course, the multiplayer of the year to Rogue Company, and that game is still alive and kicking. You know, shout out to that game, season three. We love some Rogue Company, ten out of ten there. But uh, I think this year's split game might just take it for me, I, I, as far as what I played. Mm -hmm. uh, split game is fantastic. I have been crack addicted to this game. Uh, it it launched in beta before I left for California, mm -hmm. right? So when I came back, I couldn't get in for the first like two days because of those issues with the server and all that. It was like three hour wait times. I'm like, listen, like I just I just can't do that. Like right. like, like like I'm just not gonna do that. But when I got down and you know they like have been very vocal, um, the devs, uh, 1047 games. They've been super vocal on Twitter. And they have a Discord where now you can just pop in the uh, Discord and see the queue time. Oh, cool! Whenever you want, yeah. So they have that set up too. Like they did. I feel like super honest, super apologetic about that server stuff, and like they just truly just, you know, just were not prepared for how many people are wanting to play this game. Um, but now there is no wait time as far as Discord is correct. I just checked, and um, they've been definitely lowering down those times a lot. So. I think my first game was probably on Thursday or Friday. I hit over 500 kills yesterday. Damn. So to give you some context, I have been glued to this fucking game. All right. I fucking love this game. Um, so for those yeah, that ahead. aren't familiar, uh, Splitgate, what is the pitch? It's they even say this too, mm -hmm. right? It's Halo and Portal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's Halo and Portal. Yeah. You put that together you get split gate you know they're not doing like some weird like oh heaven forbid we call a freaker in days gone zombies yes. right they're they're like very much like you no know, like we love halo and portal mm -hmm. this is halo and portal put together um it's a first person shooter uh it's very much in like an arena multiplayer map setup where you have different weapons in each map and everything and you have um like you know like specialty weapons in like very uh you know like not not like awkward but like very like special places in the yeah, map that's like very you'll have a launch yeah. yeah like yeah like you'll like have like a launcher on like the bottom portion of the map mm -hmm. or something like that or a sniper at the top whatever um and uh those are weapons like you really want to go for and stuff like that uh but I think this game is fucking fantastic. Like, I, I am really enjoying this game. And it really wonders, like, damn, if this is what Halo feels like, then fuck me, bro. <laughs> like, fuck. Like, shit. Like, I, mm, 
I would probably really love Halo multiplayer. Dude, and like I, that, I, I that's think you really would, yeah. Because yeah. no, I mean, like we've even talked about it too. Where like when Halo Five dropped, mm -hmm. I I watched a lot of Halo multiplayer gameplay. Yeah. Like I I enjoyed to visually watch that experience because like, it just looks fun to play. Mm -hmm. And um, Splitgate, if if it's mimicking, you know, however close it is to Halo, like I'm all about Splitgate. Yeah, because I I love this game. I've watched yeah. some Splitgate footage, right? I haven't delved into it yet. I am planning on to uh, doing it because, again, I love Portal and I love what I played of Halo multiplayer growing up. Um, so the idea of obviously not using the portals to the extent of like puzzle solving the way you do in the Portal games, but like using it to try and you can't put a portal anywhere, right? Like there is limitations. Yeah. So using that to sort of work around multiplayer um like popular channels and lanes and maps and, and arena stuff is really interesting so i do want to check it out but yeah, yeah. i i played a lot of uh halo multiplayer last week with my brother and i was like damn yeah I'm, I'm, i miss this so like hearing that this is sort of reaching back to that is exciting and really cool yeah so like to talk a little bit about the portals because that's going to be the most distinct thing about split gate right yeah. so at least on console on ps5 which I'm playing a PS4 version of the game. There isn't a next gen version yet. Mm -hmm. I hope there is because, like, the the game functions fine. It runs fine. Just the resolution, I think, could definitely be a step up. I feel like it's running at 1080p, which is completely playable and fine. But like, I think we can do a higher higher re resolution for sure. Um, but it's tied to L1 R1, right? You you essentially have a you have a orange portal, which is your first portal, and a purple portal, which is your second portal. And it's all based on, like, which one you put first. You know, first will lead to second. That's always the rule of it. That's how it goes. Um, on the maps, there's this, like, light blue texture that indicates that you can put a portal here, right? And why I am loving the portal system in this game is that, like, it's not just for traversal, right? Like, you may think that, like, that is the only way that you can use the portals, which is a, a very great way to use it and, and stuff, but there is a lot of other ways that you can really get the jump on people and really, like, outsmart players. Like, I'm putting portals, like, behind players w without them noticing, going through a random portal, and then going behind them and taking them out from the back, right? There are, there are, there are people out there that are doing these crazy, crazy sniper shots where... I got headshotted, Christian. Mm -hmm. A dude was in the air. I was shooting at him. He shot a portal behind me without me noticing and then looked down, put a portal on the ground, and headshotted me as he was falling. That's cool. Through the portal. Like, like, like there is just insane plays that people are doing. And, like, above all else, like, I feel like the game, in a similar vein of, like, Row Company, I feel like never feels cheap. Like, I never feel like I'm being, like, completely cheated on in the game or like cheesed on or just like something that like doesn't feel right right i always feel like i'm being outplayed in rogue company if i get outplayed or like it beat right split gate i feel the same thing about this game where there isn't a lot of cheese in the game like yeah sure if you get rocket launcher okay that's a rocket launcher like it is what it is right but um if it like a lot of times it's the portal system where it's like hey that dude just put the portal in a super creative way that he outplayed me, you know, and I fucking love it. Like I love it. It, it. it adds a whole different dimension to like the first person shooter that I think is just really great. Like I'm super enjoying split gate. Like it's, it's, it's probably going to be my multiplayer of the year as, as far as like, it's, it's a high bar. Anyone's got to reach, you mm -hmm. know? So what definitely recommend it. It's, it's amazing. I love it what Love kind it. of uh modes we looking at like is it i'm assuming it's like just all pvp but is it like deathmatch capture the flag what's up yeah so you you got your normal dom you got tdm dom being domination to be specific you know what i'm saying you, you have all that uh there's some that uh there's some game modes that i've never played before uh, uh like different twists on some like with vip where one person um in the match ends up being the vip and they have more health and if you kill them you get more points for your team and all that uh there's oddball where you essentially have to carry this ball for more time than the other team to win 
uh, and you have double health in that phase as well and stuff like that. So it's really about coordinating and defending the person that has the ball. Um, it's like just basic, you know, modes. Like there isn't anything like really insane involving like the mode um, offering, but there is a lot of modes, mm -hmm. which I think is a super cool side. And like you can um, do the same system in like COD when they did later on where like you can just go into like the casual playlist, but you can choose which modes that you'll get queued into. Okay. And you can eliminate ones that you you just don't want to play, right? Um, there's also snipers and shotties, which is super fun in this game. Um, but yeah, like it's 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 pretty much like modes that a lot of people will, will be pretty used to from other games and everything. Um, but I love it. I I really really love this game. I'm super high on it. Um, it questions like, damn, like there's probably a variant of me out there in the in the multiverse that. Is a big Halo guy, mm -hmm. <laughs> like it, it, it all makes sense. Like it all funnels in. So, yeah, uh, yeah, Splitgate's fucking awesome. I'm, I'm definitely gonna be keep playing it for sure. Um, yeah, like it, it used to be just Row Company was kind of my, you know, multiplayer offering, but now it's now it's gonna be both, you know, and and it feels good. It feels good. Shout out to Splitgate. Very nice. Fucking um, love it. Love it. Did you ever end up trying Apex Arenas? I fucking did it. I know, bro. Well, you have to, man. If you if you want to make a I'm case, a piece of shit. like I think I think Splitgate is very cool. It has a very good premise and it is very unique. But I do think you have to at least try Apex yeah. Arenas before you plant a flag That's or something because Apex fair. Arenas is very good. I was like planning like a loose like check. Mark. Sure, sure, like, sure, sure. So sure, far, sure. it's yep. this. You know, I, I can't just, say that we we still got months away, but yeah. You're right. You're right. Mm -hmm. You're right. Absolutely. I just would like to Absolutely. avoid another Among Us situation at the Joy Clicks Awards this year. Is all I'm saying. Oh my God! Here we go. This guy. So, this guy. This guy. This guy. Anyway, that's cool though. I I will probably uh, give it a shot this weekend, maybe or sometime this weekend. See what's up with it. But sounds highly, very cool. highly recommend it. Yeah, and also I would also you know give a quick shout out. Join the Splitgate Discord. Mm -hmm. To get a glance at the queue times, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They they've been very low recently. Like in the past like five days, I haven't seen it gone. I haven't seen it over like seven minutes. Okay. In the past like five days, so it's it's pretty much been kind of resolved for the most part. I feel like you know what I'm saying, but nice. um, but yeah, so good stuff, man. Where Great is? game. Great. Um, that is it for Game Scouts. Like I said, very focused on gamer talk this week but uh kevin until next week potentially with some more news where can people find you use the comments as place in source uh you can catch up on some ghost of shishima stuff talking about iki island talking about the legends updates and all that great stuff uh hunters arena legends my full uh review on that check out that you can check out the fun no abandoned trailer stream if you want it's like four hours long mm -hmm. you know just some couple of guys being dudes you know playing some games shout out to that and uh, also my top five PS5 software 2.0 updates that I personally enjoyed. I did download the beta software uh, to my console, and there's been, there's there's been some good additions there for sure. And I'll definitely be on the lookout because I want to really highlight in the video the PS Now 1080p streaming. Mm -hmm. I think it's night and day. Obviously, there's a lot of problems with PS Now, mm -hmm. but on this specific front, it's a huge upgrade. Love to see that. And um, yeah, we got Iki Islands later on this this month, so definitely check out that. Twitter at PSOurse Vids, Anchor Link, Podcast Services, Saves Lot Podcast, all that great stuff. Very nice. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, Twitch, and TikTok at Shun2D2, as well as here, youtube.com slash joyclicks for the video version of this show and every show we do in their given playlists on the channel, Gamescast playlist for this one, Jedi Knights, Excelsior, whatever you feel like viewing. Uh, you can also find this on Apple Podcast, Spotify, your service of choice. If you can rate and review on your given platform, it would be appreciated because it helps us out a ton and takes a quick second if you enjoy the program. And if you want to support us on the monetary level, patreon.com slash joyclicks at the $1 and $5 tiers. $5 tier will give you producer credit on every show we do, including this one, like Charles Applin and Aaron Easton. So thank you very much. And that is it for Gamescast 77. Like I said, we'll be back next week. Uh, there's a lot of events in August, so we'll probably have some news to talk about next week, as well as more impressions on uh, probably Kevin's impressions on Back for Blood and my impressions on Splitgate. So look forward to the part two <laughs> discussion. But we'll do a uh, swap. Exactly. So uh, until then, though, it's pizza time. It's pizza time. <laughs>
right at one. Oh, shit, bro. We really went to Alex, goddamn. <laughs> Should I get, um...